So, after not so long a wait, Soul Hackers 2 is finally out, and as expected, it seems to be getting a lot of mixed opinions from fans. But, if there's something I think most of us can agree on, it's that the DLC practices are pretty scummy. Now, I wasn't planning on covering the DLC in any capacity, because I wasn't planning to buy it, but to my surprise, the Steam review copy I got came with all the DLC except for the costume and BGM pack, so I figure that since I have it, I might as well give it an honest look and help you decide if the DLC is actually worth it. But before I get into that, here's something that most definitely is worth your money, this video's sponsor, Ridge Wallet. Those of you that haven't heard of it, Ridge Wallet is a series of high-quality wallets that are sleek, compact, and durable. Their small size allows them to fit into almost any pocket, while having just as much room to fit your cash and cards. The cards are held together by a stretchable band that allows the wallet to expand for up to 12 cards and dozens of paper bills. And let's not forget the key case, which has a similar sleek design to the wallet, and it keeps your keys safe and secure within its case. Ridge Wallet has a wide variety of different styles for its products, and, until September 30th, for every dollar you spend on their website, you will be entered to win a brand new Ford Bronco, or $75,000 in cash depending on your choice. Check out Ridge Wallet's amazing products right now using the link down below in the description. I want to give a big shout out to Ridge Wallet for sponsoring this video, and now, let's get back into it. I'm going to start by addressing the only bit of DLC that's actually free, that being the useful item set and extra difficulty, which gives you two beads, two chakra pots, two bombs of life, and one original flame for free, and it also gives you access to the very hard difficulty. I mean, I don't see that much of a problem with this, it is free after all, although personally I'm not a big fan of RPGs giving you items at the start of the game, but if you don't want to use them you don't have to. I'm a little more concerned about why Very Hard is locked behind DLC. I mean, again, it's free, but if it's free, why not just include it in the base game? This isn't the first time Atlas has done this either. They also did it with Persona 5 and SMT4 Apocalypse, but like, why? All this does is add an extra hurdle for people who want to play these modes. Not to mention, once these shops go out of service, you won't even be able to install them anymore. But unfortunately, that's all for the free DLC. Moving on, for $5, you get the Booster Item Pack, which works the same way the money and EXP grinding DLCs do in other games. You can enable or disable them in the menu, and when they're turned on, demons will frequently drop items that you can sell for a lot of money, greatly increase your EXP, or exchange for incense shards, which will raise your stats. Now, I beat the game on hard mode just fine without the help of these, and really only had to go out of my way to grind a few times, so... I guess this can help if you're trying to go out of your way to max out your party and everything, but I don't know. Compared to some of the other ones I'm going to talk about, this is probably the least offensive of the paid DLCs, but still. Speaking of offensive, the costume DLC. For $12.99, you get the Persona 4 Yasogami uniforms, the Persona 5 Shujin uniforms, not the Phantom Thief outfits, mind you, the Soul Hackers 1 uniforms, the Raido costumes, the SMT4 Samurai uniforms, and the swimsuit costumes. Now, don't get me wrong, these costumes are cool and all, but 13 bucks? Really? Are these costumes really worth that much? These aren't even, like, new costumes that we haven't seen before in other games. With the exception of the Soul Hackers 1 costumes, and I guess the fashionable swimsuits, all of these have their own counterparts in Persona 5 as part of its DLC, which you can get for free in Royal, mind you. You know what would have been nice? How about some Devil Summoner 1 costumes? Or SMT5 costumes? Maybe some Apocalypse costumes? Or SMT1, 2, and Nocturne? Digital Devil Saga? Or Persona 1 and 2? And 3? Yeah, even Persona 3 got shafted here. Persona 4 and 5 are still getting milked, while Persona 1 and 2 are getting neglected in games that aren't even Persona. Maybe if they had all these on top of the already existing ones, along with more battle themes, maybe then I could justify 13 bucks. I mean, I think they should be free, but if you're going to make people pay almost a quarter of the price of the base game, at least make the content good. And to top it all off, the only time you see these costumes is in battle. That's right, not during dungeon crawling, not during cutscenes, not even at the safe house. Even in Persona 5, you still got to see these costumes while dungeon crawling, so what's the deal here? Especially when you consider that the only character that actually walks around in dungeons is Ringo. Up next is the Demon DLC, which once again is 13 bucks, and for this price you get Tzitzimital, Anahita, Armighty, Zhao Gongen, Mara, Masakado, Satan, and Emissa. So, yeah, eight demons for 
$13. Roughly $1.62 per demon. I mean, again, just what is so special about these demons that they need to be locked behind a paywall? At least with the costumes, it's pretty much just fan service. Here, none of these are new demons. These are all very iconic demons in the series, and here it feels less about fan service and more about just content being stripped from the game. Oh, and to make matters worse, once they've been installed, these demons will still show up in your compendium and can be purchased from there for free the first time. And you don't even need to meet the level requirements. If you want, you can have instant access to some very powerful demons early in the game. You can just go to the Cirque de Gaumont Inn and summon Satan for free as soon as it opens up. Now, again, you don't have to do this, but one thing that does kind of bother me is that if you use the fusion search function and set it to include demons in your compendium, fusion recipes containing these demons will still show up in your results, which is not only annoying, but it may actually be tempting to use it as fusion material if you're very OCD about fusion like I am. And again, only eight demons, most of which we've already seen in 3D. There are still a bunch of demons from other games we haven't yet seen in 3D. Like, how about Krishna, or Maitreya, Tenkai, Rahab, Burkaba, Dagda, Cyclops, Terminator, Wild Hunt, Saladin, and I could go on. And last but not least, there's the one I'm sure everyone is most curious and also the most angry about. The Lost Number bonus story arc, which costs 10 bucks. I won't go into details about the story itself because that would be spoilers, but this DLC takes you through a series of story-driven side quests involving a new summoner named Nana. These quests become available to you as you progress through the game, and it starts with you doing what are little more than side quests, but later on, when you meet Nana, she'll start becoming more involved and will eventually start accompanying you during some of the quests. When she does this, you can't control her, but she will assist you in battle, which is actually kind of cool, although you're not really going to be using her much because, well, pretty much these side quests just have you backtracking to dungeons to fight a new boss, so outside of those boss battles, you're not going to be using her much, if at all. Although, once you get to the second to last quest in this DLC, you'll unlock a new dungeon, which is just as bland and uninteresting as all the other dungeons in the game, but it does have some of its own optional side quests in it. The story isn't really anything special, I mean, conceptually it's a cool idea, but it's sadly marred by awkward pacing and poor character development. This game wants you to see Nana as this super cool and important character with her quirky personality and witty lines in combat, but she just doesn't get enough screen time for that. The cutscenes where she quote-unquote bonds with the main cast are very short, and if you wait till after a certain point in the main story to do one of her quests, some of these cutscenes you won't even see. Oh, and remember what I said earlier about the grinding DLC not really being necessary? Well, this is the one exception because there is a MASSIVE difficulty spike for the final boss of this arc. I won't show any footage because, again, that would be spoilers, but let's just say that the game suggests you be at level 63 for this quest. That is a load of Cerberus crap. You need to grind as much as the game will let you because this boss will be doing well over a thousand damage with most attacks. And I assume Atlas made it this way so that you'd feel more inclined to buy the grinding DLC. I'll at least give them some credit for making this side story be its own thing and have the main story still feel mostly complete without it, but this is basically just an Atlas re-released new waifu sold as DLC, which, now that I think about it, I'm not actually sure if this is better or worse. I mean, I'd rather the extra content just be DLC than wait a year or two only for them to release Soul Hackers 2 Lemon Lime Edition, which costs $60 and includes all this. But then again, at least characters like Kasumi and Marie were handled better, and their new content was better too. Oh, and I almost forgot to mention the other DLC. The Mary costume for Ringo, the Phantom Thief costumes, and Iho. These are not included in any of the DLC bundles. I mean, Iho is the game's main character Frost, like Raiho and Demon Iho. And the only way you can get her is by getting the digital premium edition for $90. And yes, I did say digital, meaning if you got the physical version, you can forget about it, unless you want to pay for two versions, and that is something I simply cannot justify under any circumstances. So, do I think the DLC for Soul Hackers 2 is worth it? Well, I think the answer should be obvious if you've watched the video, but the answer is no. It's overpriced and underwhelming. I would say that the only one worth a buy is maybe the bonus story arc, but considering that that basically requires the grinding DLC to have any chance at the final boss, I'm going to say no and tell you to ignore both of them. If you absolutely do need to own the DLC, at least wait till it's on sale. For right now, there are much better things you can spend your $40 on. Oh, and yeah, I almost forgot. I looked at the DLC prices individually, but how much are you saving if you get the $40 bundle? 
Of course. Well, that is going to be it for the video. If you guys enjoyed, be sure to rate, comment, and subscribe. I know this was kind of more of a rant than a review, but I think that should tell you guys how I feel about Atlas's DLC and really just day one DLC in general. But if you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out my other links in the description. Consider leaving a Ko-Fi donation for just $3. And until the next video, I will see you all later. Thank you.